Then we're yes, we're gonna record it just for anyone who might not have make uh, make it, and people will chime in as well. Um, I'm gonna start sharing screen, and then we can get this started. So we're gonna do about um like fifteen minutes of presentation, and then the rest is gonna be Q and A. And happy to as we talk. Um, I can continue sharing your screen and showing more resources. Um, perfect. All right. Um, hello again, everybody. My name is Nicole Bass. I'm this year's national vice president, and happy to have you for our internship 101 session. Um, this is this session is part of our um larger career development. So we have a portfolio review going on concurrently, and then tomorrow we'll be having a career expo. So let's jump into it. Um, we're going to talk about essentially five main topics, finding an internship, slash networking, resume, cover le letter checklist, and a portfolio checklist, interview process, and starting the position. And then we'll end off with Q&As. So looking for internships. So this is kind of like the first like, hey, I want a job. What do I start with? Um, and it's finding these databases that firms do postings on. So as architectural organizations, AIS of course has our career center on our website. Um, AIA has a career center, NOMA and ACSA. Um, and then regionally, the pro tip is that most of you guys are around local AIA or NOMA and they have their own chapter websites. So I use AIA DC just cause I'm based in DC um, and they have one. And it's probably the same like URL, URL asserts where it's all just like job center plus whatever name is. And then I'm from New York. Um, so we have my Cobanoma and they call it opportunities. So it's kind of the same um, vocabulary. And if you're looking for particular firms, um, typically the pro tip is just to search up their firm name and the careers or job opportunities. So some examples I pulled up was like Gensler, Marvel Designs and SOM. As you can see, it's pretty much the um, firm name backslash careers. So pretty straightforward. And if you're looking for more general websites, we always like to um, say that LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and Indeed are probably the first place firms are even coming along to just like putting their stuff uh, opportunities out. Um, and if you're looking for more arch architecture oriented ones, there's of course ArchConnect, um, Architizer, and um, Powerflow. So those are kind of like the first three. Of course, there's many more. Um, but these are kind of like the first places to look when you're like, hey, I want an internship, where should I look? Going into networking, um, there's always in-person networking or virtual networking like today's event. Um, so there's always AIS portfolio reviews, mentoring programs, career expos, and especially at our quad and national conferences, we have professionals coming in, whether it be the speakers, whether it be tour leaders um, or quad uh, specific career expos that are always like, looking to talk to students. Um, of course, there's also school events, um, whether it be high school or college that has career fairs. Uh, lecture series are super cool and important to go to because it's directly talked to a professional um, after, after their lecture. Exhibition openings, that tends to drum up a lot of people to come check it out and see what's happening. And then um, local organizations typically have um, open from Fridays, lunch learning, speed mentoring, and then of course your local AIA and NOMA chapters. So just seeing what's like in your neighborhood and attending. And of course there's the social media and like LinkedIn part of networking. Um, these are kind of some bullet points of like what you should or can do on these platforms. So making sure, especially on LinkedIn, keeping your role up to date and everything. So this can include being like a teacher assistant, a woodshop assistant, things like that. Um, tagging people during events if you were to post photos so that everyone is included um, and connecting with them on LinkedIn is super important as a follow-up and making sure your like photos are professional of sorts. Um, and this one I always have to remind myself is spell check and grammar check just because you know you want to be as professional as possible. Um, I'm personally not a hashtag person but um, hashtags are a great way to like get people and like see what other people are posting about, see what other professionals are using um, or even other students and peers. And of course, ultimately this is to show off your personality and creativity. So post how you would like. Some people are more video oriented or just post oriented or just like direct messaging. So definitely um, use what is comfortable for you. Um, and 
ultimately at these networking opportunities, whether it be in person or virtual, everyone kind of always has an elevator pitch. Um, so I'll just like read this one out. So it would, an example would be like, hi, my name is Nicole Bass. Um, I'm a fourth year majoring in bachelor's of architecture. I currently have Professor Bass Studio focusing on townhouse residentials, and I'm looking for a, a summer internship after this semester. Um, I know your company is local to the area, or um, I saw your latest project around the corner. Can you tell me more um, how interns can participate and like get involved with the firm? So kind of this elevator pitch, you could make it flexible to what you're comfortable with and have it as specific as you'd like. Um, but you know, it's kind of like three main sentences of like who you are, what you're doing and what you're interested in. And this gives a direct um, quick way to any person you're meeting on, like the 101 about you. Um, moving into you and your skills. This is something where I always think it's important to do some self-reflection um, and essentially a self-assessment. So these are some of, and you guys probably know some of these things already, um, but seeing what your strengths and weaknesses are regarding architecture programs, office programs, fabrication skills, any additional skills like languages or photography um, or like web development, whatever you're interested in. And then of course the soft skills of like project managing, teamwork, um, having time management. Um, definitely these are all skills that everyone could work on. So there's no um, wrong or right way. And a lot of these things are mentioned in job postings as well. So if there's a particular job that they'll mention specifically laser cutting, if it's like fabrication or they want to, their company particularly uses Lumion and Revit. So like those are kind of good indicators on like what um, programs or skills you should know for the job. And another thing is chatting with your peers probably at the end of the semester saying like what worked and what didn't work and getting that constructive feedback from you know trusted peers and similarly with faculty and administration um, they've seen you grown whether it be throughout the semester or throughout the year and it's always good to you know meet one-on-one -on -one with them to gauge um, what your strengths and weaknesses are from their perspective and seeing what you're interested in improving on and all that fun stuff um, so going into the resume checklist, um, this is just an example one on the right, um, but ultimately this is having um, your contact information, so your full name, ideally having a professional email. Um, typically, you know, you're inclined to use your school email, but sometimes, you know, you're going to graduate eventually, and sometimes it's not always like the straightforwardness um, of like your name and like Gmail or Yahoo or whatever. Um, having a phone number and making sure you have like a good voicemail. Um, you know, some people do call and sometimes you're in school or in class and can't answer. So just having uh, just a plain general email um, voicemail. And then um, going into your education, this is really important because they're going to definitely want to see what your graduation date is, what you're majoring in. So is it bachelor's of science in architecture? Is it landscape? Um, and if you have any minors, so I particularly minored in economics, so I put that under my education list. Some places require GPA, especially like scholarships or competitions. So, and sometimes they always ask for a resume to supplement the work, so apply as needed. Um, and if you'd like to add any relevant coursework, just in case if it's a firm that's particularly um, leaning one way or another. And then with your experiences, extracurricular activities, it's kind of the same idea of having the full job title that you've been in, who's the company, where is the company located in, um, what were your start and end dates, and really describing what you did in the job. So being as descriptive as possible with like action words. Um, and of course, with your honors and any AIS experience you may have, including that to show off that like you are applying these skills and learning new things. And then one thing I always like to end off with is formatting, is that making sure you have, you know, coherent margins, whether it be one inch or half an inch, always saving a copy for yourself. You never know um, when tech, there might be a technical error. So just having a copy for yourself. Usually if the font size is from 10 to 12 point, depending on how much information you have on there, but definitely keeping it to one page regardless. Um, and just having a clear legible resume. So as you see on this example, like I'm bolding the um the health, I'm bolding the headers, 
um, and leaving space for the job title and having just clear margins and all that fun stuff. Moving on to the cover letter. Um, similarly with the resume, just again, formatting, saving a copy for yourself, keeping it only to one page and having like contact information um, and double checking your spelling and grammar. The thing with the cover letter is that think of um, the resume and cover letter as something that like complements each other. So the cover letter should really talk about things that the resume doesn't speak for. So why are you interested in the company? Um, what exactly are you looking for? Like whether it be learning or getting exposed to something that school may not um, expose you to. And of course, matchmaking a bit and seeing how like you as a person match well with the firm, whether it be interested in the same topics, whether it be like sustainability or residential or mixed use um, and like getting the opportunity to learn more um, what's in the classroom. So like on the left, it's just like a template and kind of like fill in the blank of like what you should list. And there's so many ways to do a cover letter, but ultimately um, just keeping it to one page, same thing as the resume. Jumping into the portfolio, um, we didn't want to go too in depth with this just because you could go on for days about portfolios. Um, and there's examples here on the right, and you can find more examples in like ArcDaily, Issue, ArchiSoup, ArcConnect, um, things like that. And I bring up these examples because as you could see, there's um, landscape way, portfolio way, um, portrait way, as well as showing off your models, showing off your renderings, showing off like hard line, technical drawings, as well as like the process sketches and things like that are super important to show off your skill set. So when you are making the portfolio, it kind of starts off with documenting your work. As you're going through the semester, make sure you're taking progress photos, scan your sketches, um, take model photos with like clean backgrounds and various angles. You never know um, what angle you may need in the future. Saving your working files, just in case you need to go back to adjust text um, sizes or change line weights, depending on um, your portfolio size and always having backups of your work, just because at the end of the day, you never know. And that goes into like saving your files, um, making sure you have a proper file name. I know it's easy to um, just write off, write a random file name, but having a proper folder management goes such a long way, especially when you're looking for work that's, you know, your first year or second year. Um, packaging your file, this kind of pertains to InDesign. So when you package your file, all of the assets are included um, and then captioning your images as needed and having a table of context helps remind you and keep things organized. In terms of formatting and layout tips, um, it's always nice to get an extra pair of portfolio, get an extra pair of eyes on your portfolio um, through feeding your text. Typically, like if you're by yourself, like you want to read it out loud. Does this sound coherent? Um, did I misspell anything? Does this sound awkward? And each project ultimately um, can be represented in different ways. So testing out different layouts per project can be super helpful. Um, but at the end of the day, as a portfolio, as long as it tells your story, I mean, it's there's a level of coherentness, all is good. Um, and same thing I mentioned with the cover letter and resume is that like making the font text readable and clear, not like crazy fonts, um, and nothing too big or too little, and describing your work either through project descriptions, um, material size information for your models, and again, captioning your images accordingly. So these are just some tips. We could go more into it in the Q&A if you'd like. Um, and next up, we have in the interview process. So part one is just submitting your application, making sure everything you need um, is submitted. So it's most likely your resume, cover letter, portfolio, and be mindful of the sizes. Some people uh, do ask, like, make sure your portfolio isn't bigger than like 16 megabytes or a gigabyte. It really depends. So make sure you're reading that clearly. Um, and after you submit, you get an email back and the company wants to schedule a meeting with you. So just be clear that you have class and like if they offer you some dates, be flexible um, and say like, hey, I have class right now, but I, or I have class at that date, but I can do this other timing and see what works for them, whether it be virtual or in person. And magically you're at your first interview. So you wanna dress accordingly and arrive early. And this again applies for in-person or virtual. 
um, definitely in definitely having a copy of your resume, cover letter, and portfolio on hand is super important. So if, for example, you're virtually like having those PDFs like open already, so if they ask you to share screen, it's easy to do. And then just printing your um, all those three documents on good paper is super helpful. And before you go into your interview, the pro tip is to research uh, the firm prior to the interview, see what projects they've done lately, if it's been more residential or commercial or urban planning. Um, and then after the interview, you always send up a thank you email, just following up either with the person you met or the person you've been in contact with thus far. So you're like, thank you for the opportunity. It's been really great. Um, looking forward to hearing from you. And ideally you would get an offer and you could start negotiating. So this is really advocating for yourself regarding your work, uh, school work balance and with your scheduling, make sure you're not overloading yourself because again, school is so important and takes priority with an internship. And of course, compensation with your skill set and job tasks. And we'll get more into compensation in a little, in a little bit. And then after all that, you secured the job and congratulations. So now you just settle on a start date and then you go. So talking more about um, the interview process specifically, these are kind of the questions that they frequently ask you. This is what I heard either through my peers or what I've experienced. Um, I've broken up into three groups. So about you, about the position and about the like, environment. So the classic one about you is tell me about yourself. Typically, that's how all my interviews started. Um, so it's always good to, again, have that elevator pitch of like the top three things, those top three sentences. Um, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses? And I've heard a lot where people ask, where do you want to be in five, 10 years time? Um, so it could vary on what they can um, ask you. And then about the position, um, Sometimes if they're more technical, they might ask you um, what your technical ability is regarding um, a certain program or skill, and if so, to what capacity. And this is, you know, where you can be honest and just say, hey, this is where I'm at. Um, I'm looking to learn more and develop the skill out, whether it be in your future years or not. Um, and then about the work environment, um, sometimes they ask you, like, tell me about a time where there was a conflict in a previous internship or a class project and how did you handle it? Um, usually this is to get you to answer on how you are in a group dynamic and how you handle pressure or obstacles. So this is all just to see if you're like a good fit to the group. And then moving forward to the interviewing process, um, questions you should definitely ask. I put this into uh, three categories of the job role and responsibilities, work environment and company and compensation. So before I get into it, I always like to start off with, it's all a learning process. So be patient with yourself. Um, it, this isn't something that you get immediately as like a first year or second year. This is definitely over time, even years and years of experience. So definitely just be kind to yourself throughout this entire process. So jumping into questions, um, you could always ask them, what is the onboarding process like? How are you gonna get started? Um, what is the time anticipated to be divided between meetings versus producing? Um, and since you're in school, what is the time commitment and expectations of this position? Like, are they, do they have a really busy summer season or winter season and how that overlaps with your school schedule? Regarding the work environment, um, you can tell, or rather you can ask the people, what was your experience like in the company thus far? And they could get you an inside scoop of like, oh, is it um, one way versus another? Also, a lot of companies um, have been more focused into committees like JEDI and LGBTQ and et cetera. So you could ask if there's any like extracurriculars in the company that you could be interested in. Um, and then regarding compensation, I always like to say there's never a right way to, there's never a right or wrong way to ask about compensation. You just wanna be respectful throughout the entire time. So the pro tip is to do research on the market rate salary. So like what are other interns getting in your level um, or in your area and take some time to understand your own personal salaries. Like what, how much money do you need for textbooks, um, for commuting, 
um, for getting the right um, technology and resources. So what I personally have asked in prior interviews is, I saw your job description mention the salary, the position, is it negotiable? And then they kind of give you like a yes or no. And if it is, then you get to talk about it. Um, or you could mention that you did not see an hourly rate or salary in the posting. Can we go over the details together? And this really allows um, the ball to be in their court and you can talk about what the expectations are in that way, whether it be like days off, um, again, hourly rate, uh, things like that and even professional development. So if you're always going to AIS conferences, you could bring that up as part of your compensation and saying like, I want this time off or um, I want support in going to these conferences as it pertains to your um, professional development. And then last off is starting the position. Um, so you have your start date and um, make sure you get all your workstations ready. Um, with all the necessary equipment, prepare your attire, um, commuting time, if there is one. Um, and then with the onboarding process, just make sure there's an established communication pattern between who you, who you talk for, for what. So whether it be your direct supervisor or someone adjacent to you. And then if you're interested in getting licensed, setting up your NCARB hours and making sure those hours get logged in. What I always like to talk about is the first month or quarter where it's like the 30, 60, 90 day plan where you're at the company and you wanna see what the milestones are for growth and for what projects you need to be involved in. And ultimately this is balancing your school and work schedule. I know I said that a few times already, but it's just really crucial that um, you're not skipping class to go to work and work understands that you need more time during midterms and finals. And depending on what your internship is, um, checking in during the halfway, so whether it be a semester or year long or even the summer, um, talking in with your, uh, with your supervisors about your strengths, your weaknesses thus far, and even talking about your personal and professional goals. Because um, ultimately it's an internship and they're here to help. Um, so you could get their advice and understand how they got to be in the position they're in. And then towards the end, you want to take some time for yourself to reflect on the school work balance and how did you feel? Did you feel stressed out? Um, did you feel like you could take on more? And then adjust your schedule depending on your new um, semester. And then, of course, touching base on compensation because you worked a full semester. Um, you definitely gained some skills and potentially even increased your job capacity. So seeing how that could be reflected in compensation. Um, yeah, that's our last slide. So I'm going to open it up for Q and A's. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing screen. Um, but yes, and nice to see some people joined in. I'm happy to uh, go back on anything if anyone needs. But yeah, thank you so much. And again, yeah, I'll open it up for Q and A. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I was wondering if you could go back to the portfolio slide. I think we're going to end up there anyway. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. My earphones. Check it out. Okay. Here we go. So would you recommend having, like, let's say two portfolios? I know this is something my professor said just... So I could let everybody know, I guess, is to have an online portfolio and to also bring in um, a physical portfolio that's different than the online portfolio or complements it in some way. So, yeah, great question. Um, so what I I'll tell you my experience and then I'll tell you what I've heard afterwards. So my school made during our to get into the third year, we had to create an entire portfolio. So that was all the work that like we've done thus far. So we did maybe have about like 10 projects. Um, and that portfolio was probably like 60 pages. Um, and then afterwards, when I started applying to jobs, I was like in internships, I was like, oh, no one reads um, 60 page portfolios. So there's kind of this idea of like a portfolio that has all your work completely and forever. And what people do when applying to jobs is that they'll take like, a few projects here and there and like um, shorten that huge portfolio into a smaller one. 
um, to apply to certain jobs. So then that's when you start getting different iterations of what your portfolio is. So some could be more technical and detailed heavy, depending on that firm, or it could be a little more hands-on with either fabrication or hand sketching, or even like um, sustainable analysis. Um, so that's kind of where like the multiple portfolios come in. I know other people, for example, have work experience, so they kind of have an academic portfolio or and a professional portfolio. I always recommend merging the two just because it shows like, look, you've done these things either concurrently or throughout your time and you want to represent yourself as a whole person. So those it depends on the situation um, and kind of what your school requires. Um, but yeah, that's what I've done so far. I hope that answers your question. No, thank you. Yeah, that was a good answer. Cool. Any other questions or thoughts? Could to, sorry, yeah. could you go back to the first slides? I think um, someone in the chat said. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Sorry. I'm like opening all the, I I want to see. There we go. The first slide. So first we went, there we go. Um, we talked about looking for internships so what websites to look for um i mentioned the architecture organizations looking directly on the firm or just overall job websites so everyone knows linkedin indeed glassdoor so like setting up a profile um a profile on those accounts and same thing with architect architizer things um those are also typically where architecture firms go towards and then when you're at when you're trying to look for internships through networking, going to local events, um, social media, LinkedIn, and having an elevator pitch. Um, and then I think going into your skills and just self-reflecting on architecture programs, fabrication, soft skills, things like that. Um, so you know your own strengths and weaknesses, and you know where like to improve on, and you're you know you could start making a plan forward. Any other questions or responses? Happy to like talk through anything, like what concerns you guys may have, or like if you're looking for an internship now, if there's any um, thoughts. Uh, Nicole, uh, what are some uh, red flags that people that are, like, let's say I go into an interview and there's some red flags, what might I look for that just might not be a good fit? Yeah, no problem. Um, Red flags for the firm. Um, I would definitely say there's like two levels to it. So there's one is like before you enter the physical space of like the firm. So before that, some red flags might be that um, like on the website, they might not have like all of their projects up um, and some of them might be outdated or wrong information or things like that. Um, so that's kind of just a sign of like, oh, this firm doesn't really have everything organized um so that might be a concern another one is like if you apply for a job january 1st but then they don't reply to you until like march 1st and like it's been two months and you haven't said anything and now you want to start an interview process like that's not the best um i would only say the exception is like um like government or like those like bigger scale organizations um, that sometimes like they need to hold the application up for a certain amount of time before they start interviewing, but they'll mention it in the job posting. Um, so it's always good to follow up, but if they don't message you back, it's kind of like a red flag. Mm -hmm. Um, and then say you now enter the space and the architecture like firm, and this is where like asking like, how was your experience at the firm? Or like, how'd you get here? Or like, what was your path? towards this position and you could start hearing if there's any red flags about like saying uh staying in the office too late um mm -hmm. not getting compensated for overtime um this is a really big deal that like intern you need to do a paid internship like we do not accept unpaid interns um and that's particularly with NCARB as well where like if you're doing an unpaid internship your hours don't count you are doing labor and you need to get compensated for that. It's not just like a free for all. Um, Can I stop you there? Yeah. Uh, a lot of my friends did internships over the winter. Um, and one of them was talking about how she just wasn't getting paid for overtime. And that's kind of a common thing. Yeah. Um, 
I know it's it opens a bigger discussion. Just do you, what are your thoughts on it? Uh. <laughs> Worries. Honestly, a lot of the labor movements, just not just in the architecture field, but overall, is like you're doing work, you need to get compensated. That's it, even if it's overtime. So when you're hearing people that have to do many like a lot of overtime consistently, it kind of reflects on the firm to say that like, oh, they don't know how to manage projects well enough and they overwork their workers and then it leads to burnout. And some people tend to leave, some people tend to leave the field entirely. So that's like clearly a red flag. Um, but of course, like, again, I keep saying it, but it's just true. If you're doing work, you need to get compensated for it, period. Um, I know some firms have specific departments that are like, very time sensitive, typically like competition area types, um, like, you know, deadlines are due like within a month or something. So, you know, you could tend to expect to work a little longer, but again, your like supervisors and managers and principals should be managing all of these deadlines accordingly so that you don't have to work till like midnight every night. Um, that's just ridiculous, especially while you guys are in school. Um, school comes first, as I said earlier. Um, yeah. Preach. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Does anyone else have any like thoughts, questions? I'm happy to elaborate um, on anything. I have a question. Yeah. Um, actually, I graduated last December and um, I'm looking to apply for a full time job. But the thing is, I'm also applying for the grad school mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. August. So um, I'm only have like seven months period of time so do you yeah. recommend for a full-time job or for internship I know internship can provide um, a lot of information and can be like a valuable experience that can bring a lot of amazing opportunities later down the road so mm -hmm. what do you suggest what do you advise um I'll say for people in like in your position um summer internships are pretty much always always full-time I've never seen like a part-time summer internship um so with that being said you could ask that for the spring semester and say like hey um like you know you're in this you know phase of going to grad school and you have seven months on your hand like you would like to work full-time um and typically they'll never say no or like it's very unlikely for them to say no because ultimately like architecture as a field like there's always work to be done there's always a firm that needs extra hands and more time the merrier um I would just say there's like a level of transparency when you're applying to things saying like hey um like if you're applying to x firm and there's a fall a spring internship you're like hey you know I sent my resume to the hiring manager um I just had some questions about the position ideally they message you back and say yes what's your questions and you go like, hey you know like you want you would like to do full time because you're applying to grad school later. Um, is that possible? And they kind of just give you a yes or no answer. Um, I would always suggest with stuff like that is just be respectful and follow up if they don't answer you. Um, sometimes again, architecture firms are overworked at times, so sometimes they do get distracted. But regardless, you know, it's always worth asking. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And good luck with the job search. I know it's sometimes hectic and nervous, but this is why we're here at the AIS, trying to help. Absolutely. Um, if there's no questions, I'm also happy to ask you guys questions. Um, does any, um, I guess like a raise of hands or if you wanna turn on your cameras, um, how many of you guys already have a resume to work with? Okay. Does anyone have a working portfolio to work with? Cool. Yeah, it's always getting started. Um, and the reason why I just asked these asked those two questions is because getting started on having a resume and, and cover letter and portfolio gets nerve wracking and it's kind of hard to start sometimes. So just by like kind of brain dumping and just putting stuff on a page, at least you have something to work with and you can work with either a mentor, a peer, a, a like trusted faculty advisor um, on it. And, you know, they could like redline it and all that fun stuff, but at least it's on paper ready to um, be editable. 
Uh, I'm a third year, just entering um, my second semester of the third year. Um, should I be anxious or worried about not having an internship just yet? Um, I would say that it's whatever you feel like you want to start jumping into the like job force. Um, I say this because I was a person who had an internship every single year and I just needed a break. So what I chose to do in my third year was to become a TA for the fall and for the spring. And it was still a great way to get experience, still reinforce my like Rhino and Adobe skills, especially when I have freshmen saying like, how do I save a file? And I'm like, yeah, how do I save a file? Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to still grow in your school and like get a different exposure. Um, but if you feel like you, you know, TA'd enough and you got exposed enough and you're just looking for something different, whether it be a different pace, different environment, even a different group of people, um, definitely apply to internships because you just never know um, what's happening. And something that I always like to recommend, and this is just my personal take, is that definitely see what's going on in your city, in your town, like what's being built, what's under construction. Um, research that firm and say like, oh, this firm is working on this new building down the street. Like, what are they up to? They probably need help and just email them or see if they have a job posting and say like, hey, I'm local to this area, either because you're going to school or you're born and raised here. Um, I'd love to learn more. And that could just lead to opportunities of at least shadowing who's making this project. Um, and then at least knowing some professionals outside of your academic bubble. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone else have any questions? Like, feel free to put it on the chat if unmuting is a little nerve wracking. Um, any topics I mentioned today is like up for up on the table. But if I forgot to mention anything or you know something I didn't bring up, also happy to talk about it. Um. Yeah, I had one question. What's up? Um. If you like were to like shadow uh, someone like at a firm, would that be something you would include on your resume too or no? Like, is that something um, possible? Definitely possible. I know, for example, SOM had a shadowing or has a shadowing program. I believe they started it during the pandemic. Um, and it was like a month long or like, I know it was like a good chunk of time. So when it's stuff like that, um, I would definitely include it, especially with a firm with that big of a name. Um, if it was like a day where you visited a firm, I don't think I would include it, but if it's a more formalized long-term program, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Of course. Um, what's also happening concurrently is um, our portfolio review session. So if you have a portfolio or just want to see what um, other portfolios look like, you're happy to, um, you're more than welcome to jump onto those um, and see what's happening. But I'm also here if like you guys want to share screen on resumes, cover letters. I'm also happy to go through the websites I mentioned about like what is a good portfolio and things like that. Yeah, if you could go through uh, what is a good portfolio, uh, at least that's what I would like. Yeah. Any other takers on any of those three things? Um, I'd be interested in the resume, like going through that, especially when you don't have work experience to like put in there. Gotcha. Um, okay, I think I'll... Here, let me pull up a few examples and then I can start sharing screen. Um, I think a good example also is our wonderful um, AIS candidates. They all produced um, candidate um, packets and some of them include resumes, but like resumes that are not of, um, of like job resort of jobs, if that makes sense. Um, let me see. I don't feel like I find any good ones. If anything, I could pull my own resume up somewhere. Oh, this is a perfect example. Um, let me see if I can pull up another one, just in case. Uh, 
Okay. Um, I also have mine. It doesn't have architecture uh, uh, works. It's like different kind of jobs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that'd be if great. Want... Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe then you could share screen first and then we could jump into my re resources. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Perfect. Can you see it? Um, yes. Yes, I can. So great, definitely having your education and your co concentrations and relevant coursework um, and then professional experience. This is all great. And then write your skills and your awards. Congratulations on those. Thank you. I would definitely say um, for resumes you definitely have all the content down um which is perfect so next step is like how do i like make this personable and a little creative and reflective of your personal skills so you know this is like a basic like call like two columns and like rows so seeing how you could like adjust the format to be a little more um artistic right even if it's only required one page like i can do some creative work on in that yeah like um here i could show some other i could share my screen and then show you some good examples um let's see one two let me also pull up mine in the meantime sorry um, let's see which one i have it at um okay for let's okay sharing a screen i'll start off with mine just because you shared yours um so this is what i have for my elections so let me let's see not just a little bit um so see i had my name my city and state um typically Nowadays, it's not best practice to put your entire address. So I just put my um, borough and state, my phone number, my professional email. This is my education. So Bachelor's of Architecture at the Spitzer School of Architecture at City College of New York. Um, so another example would be like some people get like Masters of Architecture at GSD. That's the Graduate Student GSD, Graduate Student Design. Um, center or program at harvard so it's like those two names relevant coursework principles of i, I did um an econ minor so i did management microeconomics and a, i did advanced studio um just that's what my school called it and then leadership and roles um here i could see a little bit for it um i was you know chair of a committee at school so i was a chair of school at school these were my dates at the time and I use like action verbs that said like I represented student students hosted conducted like these are verbs um I was vice president of a chapter at a school um vice president of AIS as well so like you know supported assisted documented co-created um and then I did podcasting so build and maintain coordinated made and marketed um and then with my skills um, I had design software, so that's where like Adobe, ArcGIS, SketchUp, um, AutoCAD, Rhino came in. Applications, that's where I use that term to be more about like office programs. So like Microsoft, Google, Canva, um, mm -hmm. then relevant skills, problem solving, teamwork, and things like that. And then with affiliations and awards, um, I was in the NOMAS, I was... Um, on the National Committee for Council of Global Representatives at AIS, um, and then I received a scholarship. So, you know, this has nothing to do with any like internship work or anything. Um, and then the year before that, um, same thing I had with the clubs, but I just wanted to point out that I included being a teacher assistant. So like assisted a professor, helped students, integrated students. So um, 
and this is also a different format um, as you can see so there's like different ways on your different vibes I include my GPA in this one I included um, additional um, courseworks and things like that and then it, does anyone have any questions or thoughts I could show more examples if that helps This is good, thank you. Yeah, of course. And my thing is like, I literally just searched myself up. So Nicole AIS and then these were my candidate packets. Um, if you need any more examples. Um, and then one for portfolios, um, Arcasu, sorry, I never could spell that right. There we go. Um, this is a lot for um, people who need like help on portfolio examples. So, you know, just searching it up and let's see if we could find a good one. So this is a great, like, this is a great example. Um, here, I can zoom in. Oh, there we go. We can zoom in a little more on it. Oh, just a little bit more. There we go. So he has, you know, table context. I'm sure he has like more products than this, but he definitely, pick the style and stick to it. So, you know, people will give you different opinions on what style they prefer, but he chose his and stuck to it. And that's really important for cohesiveness. And it shows like, you know, how to make a design decision and keep to it and not have like different projects. So you could see like a lot of his drawings, um, like they're one whole page and probably because it's very detailed. Um, some even take two pages, especially the renderings, depending on how much detail and resolution you need. Um, another one, let's see. This one's like a different take, right? So a lot more line work, um, same style with the renderings. That's also a level of cohesiveness of like each project still has a um, rel are relatively comparable. Um, and then descriptions of the work. And this one, right, is like even a different format. So the other one was, let's see, it's kind of looks like an eight and a half by 11, um, whereas this is maybe more square-like. Um, of course, this these are all these design decisions. Um, so being intentional about it. And another one, this is also a portrait. Um, I want to see if there's a line. Oh, perfect. This is like a landscape version. Um, so seeing how that plays into it and how your drawings um might look better, um, one orientation or another. So in terms of like what is a good portfolio, ultimately. Um, it's just making sure a story is being told about your work and yourself, um, making sure the projects are well um, represented. Um, as you can see, like, it's not like this person has like 50 drawings on one page, you know how to like balance it out and not overwhelm the person um, and things like that. So definitely no necessarily wrong answers, but there's always either best practices or styles that you should keep to. Okay. Any other questions or topics we could talk through? For the 30, 60, 90, um, I remember you talking about that. Was that like you set in certain uh, goals for, for yourself or what they expect from you? Um, this is where I like talk to my supervisor. Um, I had like a few internships before I became national vice president um, and they were semester long or year long. So I like I knew the time frame. It wasn't like a mystery of like how long I was staying at least. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm a person who really values like milestones and knowing what to work up towards. So an example of like, or relatively how my 30, 60, 90 days panned out was the first 30 days was just integration into the office community. So having one-on-ones with everybody, um, making sure I had access to all of the online programming. So whether it be email, um, the back end of websites, um, Adobe licenses, Zoom licenses, things like that. Um, and then starting to like send out emails, introducing myself to any partners that I needed to or any clients. 
um, and having like a signature. It's like kind of those like basic office things that sometimes does take all 30 days, sometimes it's shorter. And that's kind of like the onboarding time frame. Um, and then when we talked about the 60 days, it's like, okay, you know, I'm hired. What projects am I going on? Is it going to be towards a residential townhouse? Is it going to be towards um, hosting an event at the end of the month or at the end of the season? Is it um, finishing up what someone left off and like wrapping up loose ends? So that gave me an idea of like how many projects um, I'm expected to be on and the time frame of like, okay, this is due within 40 days, 60 days, 90 days. And then with the 90 day one, that's kind of where, let's see, that's maybe mid-semester. Um, so then making sure it's like, you know, in 90 days, I have midterms based on my syllabus. I'll keep you updated if the professor changes anything. So giving them like well in advance, like when I'm going to need off um, or just like less of a lo less load um, or vice versa. Like maybe I have like spring break and I'm choosing to work. I'm like, hey, I'm free for this entire week. Can I work all 40 hours or like 30 hours? Um, so things like that. Okay. I'm here till like two, two thirty, so I'm happy to answer any questions or review anything. I'll also stop the